Well, this is the new Linux Mint Debian Edition 4, and we're going to be taking a look at it right now on Linux Lounge. Well, our review of this distribution starts at the um, you know menu that you will see when you first boot up the ISO for this distribution. However, first let's talk about what this distribution is. Linux Mint Debian Edition is essentially the Debian version of Linux Mint. It's kind of uh, as simple as that, really. And um, the reason for its existence is in case Ubuntu, you know, goes away or the Linux Mint team feel the need to move to a Debian base for whatever reason, or in case you prefer a Debian base to Ubuntu base, like myself. Um, now, I think it would be better to consider this a pre-configured Debian system than, you know, a uh, Ubuntu system, uh, because that's kind of essentially what it is. And what this is, is essentially a Debian-based distribution with everything pre-configured out of the box for you, an easy installer, um, the Cinnamon desktop and all the packages that, uh, you know, come with that. But also a lot of like Linux Mint specific things as well. Um, so it kind of is really. It's also a Linux Mint system without the Ubuntu stuff, but also a Debian system in its own right. And additionally, what a lot of people might like about this over a traditional Debian system is, as you can see from this boot menu, it comes with non free stuff you know, non-free drivers, non-free software in the repositories, whereas Debian by default does not. So for example, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you can, uh, right from the boot menu, get those proper drivers loaded. But uh, we're not going to do that for now. Instead, let's start up Linux Mint Debian Edition 4. And I will show you what the installer looks like, because it's actually a very good installer, and it's no more complicated than Ubiquity, uh, which is the Ubuntu installer, and in fact, in this new version of Linux Mint Debian Edition 4, um, the installer now supports automatic partitioning, so it's incredibly easy to get this installed. Pretty much every bit as easy as it is to install the um, Ubuntu version of Linux Mint. Um, now what's different, while this loads, what's different between Linux Mint Debian Edition 3 and 4. Well, there's lots of different things, but the sort of main improvements is all of the features of Linux Mint Debian Edition have been brought up to the, um, you know, the newest version of Linux Mint, which means you're going to get the new Cinnamon desktop, the new Linux Mint apps, all that sort of stuff in a new ISO. And um, as well as that, you're going to get the new Debian packages and such. And uh, here we go, this is the Linux Mint Debian Edition desktop by default. Let's go into the installer and it'll take a second to load, but as you'll see, very nice looking installer. Click next, you've got you know, your list of languages. You know, you can select, uh, select your location, select your keyboard layout, name, your computer, all that sort of stuff. So let's just quickly run through that. ourselves a password. Not that it really matters, uh, because I already have a uh, you know instance of this pre-installed. And as you can see, completely automatic installation. You can use logical volume management if you want. You can encrypt your disks. You can fill the disk with random data if you need some extra security, but that will take a while. And of course, if we click next, uh, that's going to wipe our drive. But that's not what we want because I already have Linux Mint Debian Edition installed. So let's go ahead and reboot into the installation I have done previously. And here we are on the Linux Mint Debian Edition 4 desktop. As you can see, you've got yourself a welcome screen, and it's very similar to the standard Linux Mint Edition desktop, which by design, but we'll get onto all of that in a second. First is the um, you know news release. Uh, they've released the Debian, you know Linux Mint Debian Edition four, and uh, this is their announcement. Unfortunately, there are ads on the Linux Mint site, but I suppose that's understandable. Um, you know, you've got their announcement. So, uh, what's new? 
Um, automated partitioning with support for LVM and full disk encryption as we've just seen. Home directory encryption, which is great for security. Um, automatic installation of the NVIDIA drivers, which if you want to do some gaming, that's fantastic news, but it also means that you won't need to go messing around with packages and such. NVMe support, good, good. Secure boot support, which is something that's going to be very useful for people with newer computers that uh, support secure boot. BTFS sub volume support, a revamped installer, which revamped it is, it's very good, very easy to get it installed. Automatic installation of microcode packages, useful, something that I don't think standard Debian has. Automatic rev uh, resolution bump for the live session to a mini uh, minimum of 2024 by 768 in VirtualBox, which, you know, I don't think most people are going to notice that, but cool. Um, as I said earlier, yet the Linux Mint 19.3 improvement. Um, so all of that, uh, which is in Linux Mint 19.3. Um, apt recommends enabled by default. Removed the Deb Multimedia Repository and Packages and Debian 10 Buster Package Base with Backports Repository. So you're getting all the sort of newer Debian stuff. Which, you know, I can see this being a good distribution for people who want a Debian distribution but maybe don't want to go through all the not so user friendliness of standard Debian, this is a great choice. So now onto the distribution itself, what do you get? Well, the first thing you'll see is a welcome screen. And um, as you can see, you know, you've got your first steps, your documentation, your help, and where you can go and contribute. Um, so, you know, of course, for your um, first steps, you know, you know, you've got your system snapshots, an easy way to install multimedia codecs, fantastic. Um, you get an update manager, but we'll go on to that more later. You can choose your desktop layout, so, you know, if you want something more traditional, that's an option, but if you want something more modern too. Personally, I prefer the traditional layout, but I'm not going to change it right now, because since this is in a virtual machine, it may crash. You've got easy way to configure the system settings, fantastic. You know, you've got yourself a software manager and you've got yourself a built-in firewall. You've got some nice documentation, which is good for newer users. And you've got a place to get some help, which is um, fantastic if you have any issues with the system. Which is also quite good for new users, although I would probably recommend the standard Linux Mint for new users. And of course you've got somewhere to contribute. So. Like I said earlier, this is kind of Linux Mint, but without the Ubuntu stuff. Or, it can be a Debian system with all the nice Linux Mint extras. So first, let's look at it as a Linux Mint system without the Ubuntu. What do you lose? Well, you lose a little bit of hardware support, or at least easy to install hardware support, because traditionally, um, Linux Mint comes with the Ubuntu hardware enablement utility. Uh, this does not. So although you have an easy way to install your uh, NVIDIA drivers, maybe if you have like a proprietary Wi-Fi card or something, it's not going to be quite as easy. However, you know, that's going to, uh, whether or not that's a problem is going to vary from person to person. Um, additionally, the fact that uh, this is, you know, a Linux Mint system will mean you get some non-free software, which if you're concerned about running that, it's going to be awful, but for the average person, it's going to be completely fine. Um, so I think, you know, if you want an entry point to Debian, this is a good way in. But also, looking at this as a kind of, um, you know, Debian system, like a pre-configured Debian system with all the Linux Mint uh, goodness in there, this is a fantastic distribution. You've got an easy way to do things. Um, you've got a very easy way to install software. Um, if it will launch. Oh, wrong one. There you go. Like a fantastic easy way to install software with the Linux Mint software tool, which is an absolutely fantastic program. You can install flat packs out of the box, so pretty much any Linux program that you want, you will probably be able to get in this software center. Um, you know, everything is here. You've got editors, picks if you don't know what you uh, you know want necessarily. 
so that's fantastic. Um, talking about software, you've got the rather excellent Linux Mint Update Manager, uh, which of course, um, if we just go ahead and refresh that, um, but you know that's a fantastic option if you don't want to go messing with the command line. Uh, with it being a Linux Mint system, of course, you get all the sort of you know usual software you would get with Linux Mint pre-installed. Um, you know, you've got all the stuff you could ever want to get stuff done. It's not bloated at all. In fact, it comes with less stuff than most Linux distributions. For example, no GNU image manipulation tool. All you get is a simple drawing app. Um, you know, you do get the LibreOffice, which that's nice. Um, you've got an easy way to install your multimedia codecs, and you've got, you know, your preferences and your administration and stuff. Um, what else is quite cool is you can make backups very easily. And um, what else is nice with this being a pre-configured system, uh, you know, it's ready to go out of the box, as you've just seen, all the pre-installed software. Um, but also it looks good out of the box um, and I you know do think that Linux Mint is very well themed you know you've got yourself a nice selection of themes that you can you know install uh, whereas with a standard Debian install out of the box it does look a little bit bland you've got yourself a nice set of wallpapers but I imagine most people are probably just gonna want to use whatever they have already but this is a good option and yeah, all in all, it, it is a good looking system. You know, it's easy to get set up and running. It's free from Ubuntu if you don't necessarily like what they're doing. As a result of being based on Debian, it's going to be rock solid and very stable, very fast. In fact, I've noticed a significant performance increase uh, to this over the standard Ubuntu edition of Linux Mint. Um, and of course to the new user or the newer user who maybe doesn't want to mess with standard Debian this is going to be an easy way in not like you know your non-free software included by default hardware support easy way to get and install software easy way to update your software so all in all if you're looking for an easy way to get into Debian or a way to get away from Ubuntu based distributions this is a fantastic option and I couldn't recommend it more so I think that's uh, it for this video. I would highly recommend giving this a look. Thanks for watching.